Hi. Okay. Why do we pick up our dog's poop? Put it in a plastic bag and then put it in the garbage. When poop, excrement, crap, feces as it is, is baseline plant food and fertilizer. Why are we doing this? I, 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 I've I heard of a few reasons why we don't do this and why it's not proposed as a general practice. But I feel there's still something off here that doesn't quite sit right with me. In agriculture, they use fertilizer, which is a combination of plant food from animals. The animals are probably largely herbivores, so they're grass eating. So it's cows, uh, sheep, um, cow, sheep, pigs, or pigs are omnivores. And maybe this kind of poop is better for the soil overall. Fine. Maybe that that herbivore poop or grass eating, plant eating, animal poop has a an alkaline value to it. It has a higher pH level. And this is better for plants overall. I get it. But, and, and it's understood that the carnivores, because they're meat consuming, have more acidic poop because of the meat and the protein in their feces. However, We don't go around collecting lion feces and the other wild felines like tigers, leopards. We don't go around collecting their feces in little plastic bags. Wolves, wolves that hunt in packs, Live, wolves that live in packs. Huskies? Siberian huskies? But let's just, let's keep it at wolves. We don't go around collecting their poop in little plastic bags. So somehow their poop is still okay for the environment. But our dog's poop isn't. I've also heard that our, through different websites and things, when you ask about this, that our dog, dog's poop contains viruses and bacteria that should they be left in the environment when it rains that would be the the viruses and bacteria would be washed back into the water systems and that's what we don't want because our dogs are so very dirty and unclean Our dogs that have all the vaccinations, immunizations and treatments under the sun at our local veterinary clinics, even with all of that, 
their poop is not fit to be introduced into the environment. Is this then implying that the vaccinations, immunizations and treatments are therefore ineffective? Essentially useless, ultimately, if those bacteria and, and, and viruses are still in the poop even after our pets have been immunized and treated. If so, what was the point of all that expenditure? What was the point of getting all those treatments and vaccines and immunizations? Uh, another point. You know, a lot of viruses and bacteria are only able to function and stay alive inside the animal anyway. That's why they often say you should not encourage your dog to consume or sniff out other dogs' poops. That's understandable, but essentially... Like, like that would be the only way that it would be transferred. But then if most of the population has their dogs vaccinated, then why is this a concern? And how come it doesn't affect wild dogs and wolves in the rest of in the wild environment i mean wild dogs and wolves live in areas where there are no humans to take care of them they're not being taken to veterinary clinics for all these treatments and vaccinations would they be worse off or less worse off with their poop being in their poop being um integrated into the soil there If a wild dog or a wolf never had any vaccinations, is he less diseased or more diseased than our pet dogs we have in our homes? Because the way we're being told that the poop coming out of our animals cannot be left in the environment implies that they are so dirty and unclean even after all the treatments that they've received, even after all of that. So were the treatments effective or ineffective? Were they relevant or irrelevant? And coming back to it, yeah, I mean, a lot of viruses and bacteria don't really survive very long outside bodies because of either heat, heat or cold, moisture or dryness. So basically the, the, uh, the elements kill off most bacteria and viruses, not, not, let's not say bacteria, but viruses that are usually, um, that usually thrive inside a body. It's all rather confusing. And every time I see, I mean, I'm not a dog owner, I'm a cat owner. But every time I see a person picking up their dog's poop outside, it feels off. It feels like we're doing something dumb. I understand that in, in many areas, maybe like around the world, there are different biomes with different uh, needs for the soil, the soils, the soils and their um, 
local flora need different, different kinds of pH levels for things, but generally not acidic, more alkaline, sure, more basic. Um, and the soil fertility, basically how healthy and how nutrient rich the soil is, varies greatly all over the earth. Now I can imagine how if you had largely meat eater poop going into previously a largely plant eater predominant area that might change the ecosystem a bit. However, if you, already, if you have barren land like um, soil that has very little nutrients in it, it's pretty dry, it's pretty sterile, there is not a lot going for it. Surely then, any poop or excrement would be welcome. Wouldn't it? It is said in, it's said on many websites that dog poop is very nutrient rich because of all the food, the healthy, super healthy pet food we give them. So it's very, it's very rich in nutrients. Nitrogen and phosphorus specifically mentioned. And we're supposed to be putting nitrogen and phosphorus back into the soil, aren't we? If you look on all the gardening and composting and um, um, global warming websites, they're always stating that we need to keep the carbon in the soil, we need to improve nitrogen and phosphorus retention in the soil and then you have an animal that specifically excretes poop that's very full of that why wouldn't you just let it stay on the earth? Why, would, why wouldn't you just put it in the bushes or in the soil where it can benefit and, and feed whatever's there. I live in northern China, it's extremely, the soil as I mentioned is extremely dry and barren here. I, I would say the soil needs whatever it can get and I'm always seeing people picking up their, their dog poop in plastic bags. And it feels off. It feels weird, like we're we're not we're not doing the right thing with what we have. I I feel like there is such focus on on things that seem so small and irrelevant. It 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 just feels like. There are so many different reasons why we shouldn't be leaving our dog's excrement there to fertilize the earth. When surely if even just one reason, an environmental reason was important enough, that would be, that would be it. They, they wouldn't need to add on to it that Oh, you need to clean it up because we don't want people stepping in it. You need to clean it up because it's smelly. You need to clean it up because it's unaesthetically, unaesthetically pleasing. Basically, it looks gross. Um, we need to clean it up because there just seems to be so many, like they put in different reasons at different junctures to sort of cover bases which makes me feel that the one that would seem the most relevant 
is not enough, they need to supply alternative support so that people go along with it. People don't fully understand the environmental part of it, but they do understand the fact that poop as a whole is kind of gross. Us humans don't really want to deal with it. We don't want to smell it. We don't want to have to touch it. And so there's a sort of PC culture around poop and dealing with people's pets' poop. So, you know, that's brought to the fore. And then the environmental reason sort of goes along in the background, but no one really knows why. They know that some things are good for the earth and they know that other things aren't. And I feel like everyone's a little confused by that area where poop is not fit for the soil. This particular creature's poop is not fit for the soil. And we're not taught in a simple enough way as to why. It's not encouraged to understand it clearly. And so they just band-aid it over with the, well, you don't want to have to step in it. Other people don't want to have to step in it. It's sort of glossed over. They don't want to go deeper into the issue. That's what feels off to me. They don't want to have to explain it too clearly. It feels like being bamboozled. It feels like we're given a reason and if we delve too much, it becomes either too confusing or too boring to pursue. And so there's this other one that we can go back to. It's ick. We don't want to have to deal with it. Just put it away, put it in the garbage. Oh, okay, all right, got it. Careful now. There's another thing that, that, that's kind of been bothering me as well. There's this focus on just this thing we're doing with our pets, right? So with, with the onus that it's environmental concern, right? Concern for the environment. We don't want to change the soil too much. We don't want it to affect the water systems. Okay, fine. But there's other things going on in the environment where there's no concern for that. There's no concern for certain developers buying huge swathes of forest land to do whatever they like with. And it keeps going on even today. There are so many platforms and, uh, what do you call it, groups together these days that are trying to stop um, the deforestation thing from happening. But if you look at it, I mean, there aren't baseline policies. There are not enough baseline government policies in place to stop corporate companies coming in and buying up a whole swathe of land rather than respecting the, the culture and the health of the soil and the environment there. There's none of this policy in place. Anyone, can, anyone with enough money can go in and buy whatever they want and do whatever they want to that land. You know? Here in China, like, you know, okay, the, the idea of garbage separation, right? The, we're encouraged to separate our garbage. It's worldwide. You should put your kitchen scraps in this bag. You should put your, your other kind of stuff in other bags and so on and so forth. And maybe garbage separation is a a clear and defined thing in other countries and it's processed well. However, here in China, you can separate your garbage into the different bins. But when the garbage truck rolls round, it's all chucked into the same truck. The glass, the metal, the cardboard, the wood, the pieces of broken furniture and kitchen scraps, food delivery items, food delivery containers, spilt oil, all goes into the same truck and compressed and it's taken to the landfill and dumped there. All of it 
all together at the same time. Private companies, private little outfits and groups come around in the cities in the early mornings to the garbage areas and they specifically remove certain things like cardboard or glass or it's private companies that are doing that. Private like little groups of people that take actually take that item or those materials to different places to get, get it recycled and to get recompensed or paid for it. It's not a government thing. Even though we have bins that state it needs to be separated. And then, so, so where is the environmental concern there? We put just about anything in our garbage, which is taken to the landfill and dumped on the land. The rain comes and rains through it all, and the water leaks whatever is in that garbage into the earth batteries, whatever, everything. And that goes into this. But there's no concern for the soil runoff or what goes into the water systems from a landfill or the big garbage dumps. It's weird. It's really weird to me. And very contradictory. Which is why I have a huge issue just swallowing it whole. And believing it. Another thing that happens um, here in China is um, we're in northern China so it's extremely dry and cold up here especially in winter. In summer it's really dry and hot so in, in, when, in summer it's dry and hot in winter it's it's dry and cold it's always dry right so you would think that moisture retention in the earth would be an important thing if you were environmentally minded, if you were environmentally concerned. However, here around the cities and the towns in, in autumn, all the leaves fall off the trees, right? And they cover the earth. Now in the wild, there's nobody to rake up those leaves. And that's a good thing because the fallen leaves cover the earth and create a kind of blanket that traps in the heat and the moisture in the earth to keep it still viable and um, basically help life inside the earth still survive and not become too dry and arid. But here in the civilized area or civilized areas where all the people live, at every chance when the, when the fallen leaves fall on the ground, people, government systems, are constantly scraping up all those leaves, taking them away, probably burning them, leaving the ground dry and cold for the whole of winter. Whatever is living underneath the ground, or whatever is living in the earth, probably doesn't have much chance of survival during winter. However, if there were no people around to do that, the leaf blanket would remain there and keep the earth moist and much warmer through that time through winter. It's always puzzled me. I do not understand why it's done. I don't understand. Why do they do it? We're not given an explanation. It's not like publicly explained. Here in China, I have not seen composting being encouraged. Um, it is probably happening on the farms in the countryside. It probably happens um, within people's gardens, like people are probably doing it in their separate gardens, in their houses, which are further afield from the cities. Um, I'm personally unaware of it because I don't know anybody with a, with a house and then land. Um, but within the cities, and I mean, there's, there's green areas within the cities. And we could be, there could be an encouraged community garden culture. There could be. And we could definitely have 
within apart, even within apartment buildings and in blocks. Composting encouraged with people collecting their kitchen scraps in, in separate bags and then mixing those together. I mean, we would have a lot of quality compost. There's so much here. People are cooking all the time at home. And so there would be a lot of kitchen scraps. Um, yeah, eggs, eggshells, carrot scrapings, leek, whatever, whatever you want. There's so much. But this is an area that's totally, it's not even regarded, it's disregarded, it's, it's not even focused on. But God forbid we leave our, our dog poop on the land. God forbid. And there's no alternative composting measures being taken. It's all a bit odd. So what it feels like, it feels like we're actually supposed to be starving the earth. If you had to look at it objectively and not just and not take in whatever you were being told, if you had to look at it objectively, just from what is being done and not take in whatever you're told, it looks like we're supposed to starve the earth, we're supposed to keep it cold and dry and make it as difficult as possible to plant or encourage any plant life or growth there. What's up with that? There's, there's also another thing that strikes me as really weird. Now, I, I don't know about uh, other, other countries. Um, I, I Probably not. I, I, I would think, though, first world countries around the world are very similar, actually, to here in China. In most first world countries, you don't really see fruit-bearing trees in the cities. If you live in one and you find fruit growing in your city, I would love it if you could comment and let me know about that because I feel that's the exception to the rule. I feel like it's, it's extremely rare to see that. I feel like across the board it is stipulated that should, there should be no fruit, no fruit hanging from trees in the city. There should be no fruit-bearing trees within the city. There shouldn't be free food available for people. I recently discovered that after looking around and going, well, yeah, why is that, that we, we don't have any fruit-bearing trees in the city? Why, why is that? And I found out somewhere that, yeah, well, they plant largely male trees, you know, male self plants, there is the male and the female too. That's why it's important that you study biology in school if you can, or if your kids can. Yeah, we, we were, it is only male trees that are planted within the cities so that they don't bear, because they don't bear fruit. And then someone said to me, oh, it's, it's, it's because if there were fruit trees, um, they would have fruit and the fruit would fall from the trees and fall on the ground and become rotten and people would slip and slide in it and it would create a smell. So this is another aesthetic thing that they bring up. But actually, to be honest, I know for a fact that if you had fruit trees growing within this city, Beijing, the fruit would not last long on the tree. People would come along and take it off and eat it. They would. There are IEs. There are all, all, older, the older generation here would take care of that. There would not be much fruit lying on the ground because they would, it, would, it would be eaten. The fruits of the trees would be eaten and appreciated. What seems apparent to me is that it's a problem somehow for someone somewhere that there be 
that there be fertile soil and available free fresh fruit food for people. This is what seems apparent to me, just from if you look at the tendencies, the practices, the habitual patterns of things, this is what it looks like. There are a million and one reasons given as to why it's all done, but if you look at it, just objectively with your eyes, what's left at the end of the day? Barren soil and not much free fruit anywhere in amongst the most populated places we live on the planet. Now, why is this so important? Why am I going on about this poop thing? I really hope I'm paranoid and I really hope I'm paranoid and I'm wrong. But it, there's a few things leading up here. Humans seem to be getting guilt trips all the time about the carbon thing in the earth, about driving their cars, about taking too many flights, about eating meat even, right? Okay. And like we're, we're omnivores, so we can probably survive on other things. Can these guys? Can, can these guys be omnivores? I'm, I'm not sure they can. Dogs and cats, their systems, as we know, are not outfitted to be omnivores. Felines and canines, they eat meat in the wild. So if we're being discouraged from eating meat, and you have to keep in mind there's an enormous meat production uh, industry, even just for pet food, for quality pet food, right? So at some point there's probably going to be some discouragement on meat, meat for pets. I mean, if there's meat discouragement for us, then it's going to carry through to the others because I feel like pets are probably seen as a, it's a luxury, not an essential in our lives. Having a pet is a luxury and like a, an extremity thing. It's not a, essential to our being. I think it's essential to our being, but you know, we're not having kids anymore. We're just looking after other species. So if you follow these trends towards a natural conclusion, it feels like a slow creep. Humans being discouraged from eating meat. There's an enormous meat industry behind the production of pet food. I wonder what's next. And then plus it's also being implied with this poop scoop thing, with this leave no trace thing idea. Leave no trace of, of that you were there. And it carries through to leaving dog poop in, on land or in the wild. We're not supposed to do that even. It's implying that as well as whatever's going into the animal meat is bad. Also what's coming out of them is also bad. That's what we're learning here, right? That's also bad. So what's going in is bad. What's coming out of them is also bad. You move this further on down the line. Maybe ultimately we're going to be discouraged from keeping these pets, keeping dogs and cats at all. Right? 
maybe at some point there's going to be a policy saying you can only have this kind of animal, you can only have this many. There's going to be a limitation on these things. There's nothing at, on, at the moment, but you'll notice things are putting in, put into place slowly, step by step over time, and then at a certain point it's pointed out that only one next juncture is the most reasonable or the most logical, so let's follow that one. The most logical, if feeding an animal is bad, and then it pooping as well is also bad, what's the point in, in, in keeping that animal at all? So it feels to me like a slow creep towards us not having any domestic animal life in our homes. That's what it feels like. I mean, we don't really have chickens anymore. Like, unless you live on a farm, you're not going to have chickens and pigs and cows. As an average person, maybe 50 years ago, you might have a couple of chickens. Maybe you might have a pig. Okay, but nowadays, like my mom and dad's time, sure. But these days, if you live in the city and you, you just have an apartment, no, right? Your options are bunny, bird, fish, dog, cat. And so it looks like if you follow this thing along, dogs and then probably cats are going to follow in that disappearance of the animal species around us. There's so little biodiversity as it is. And it looks like we're not even being encouraged to keep the ones we do have. Where is this going? What are we ultimately going to be left with? And for those of us who rely on animals for comfort, support, love, what's going to happen to those people? I mean, if you don't have a kid, it's quite difficult for people to hold steady, formal relationships for long periods of time. Our lives are, you know, pretty transient in certain ways, in, in the ways that we are employed in, in some areas and then have to move on to others. Not much is stable. And if you take away the domestic animal factor, where are we going? Is our human population that much of an issue anymore? I mean, to my understanding, it, it sounded like quite a few countries are going into negative growth. Negative numbers. And especially after COVID, COVID took down quite a lot of people. Just watch the creep, man. What Watch the slow progression of things. Like, you think these things, like the poop thing, are unrelated. You think they're just like unconnected to other things. Just watch. Hold on to your loves. <laughs>